Tobit is a, uh, is a fascinating story of a, uh, uh, there's a, basically it's an adventure. Tobit is the father and his son's name is Tobias. And so as Tobit becomes blind and his son goes off on an adventure with an angel. He doesn't know it's an angel until the end of the story. So, you know, I think, well, that's pretty, that's pretty wild. Well, they're, you know, Lot didn't know it was angels that were with him. Abraham didn't know he was having lunch with angels. So angels can take on human form and people don't know the difference. Okay, that, that has happened in scripture. So anyway, in the story here, at the end of the story, everything works out well for, for the good guys in the story. At the end of the story, at the end of the adventure, the angel is giving Tobias some advice before he takes off. And he says, you know, I'm one of the angels who's involved in, in interceding uh, bringing, bringing the prayers of people before God. He says, and he says, I want to give you some advice <laughs> related to prayer. So I think, well, this is, this is, this is worth listening to. So uh, I, I listen to it and then think about it and like, whether you agree with uh, whether you consider this to be part of scripture or not, uh, think about what he's saying and think about the rest of the scriptures. If this is, uh, if this lines up with this. So, uh, this is in, if you have it in your Bibles, it's in Tobit, um, chapter 12. This, this is the angel's advice to, to, to Tobias on prayer. Um, starting at verse 8, he says, Prayer is good with fasting, almsgiving, and righteousness. A few prayers with righteousness are better than many with wrongdoing. It's better to do almsgiving than to lay up gold, for almsgiving rescues one from death and it will wash away every sin. Those who do almsgiving and are righteous will be full of life, but those who are sins are enemies of their own life. Now you can understand why Martin Luther wasn't real thrilled about including this in the scriptures. <laughs> it really, really went against uh, uh, some of the things that he taught. Uh, and you may struggle with this a little bit too, so I don't know. But uh, So think about what he's saying here. He's saying... Uh, Prayer is good, accompanied with fasting, um, fasting, almsgiving, and righteousness, all right? Uh, and uh, he says, a few prayers with righteousness are better than many with wrongdoing. I think <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And it also, it also lines up with what David said and what Peter said, is that you're much better off to spend time repenting and, and, and cleaning up your life uh, to, to confess your sins and to repent and, and just spend a minute to, uh, approaching God in prayer than to spend hours and lots of prayers uh, of an un unrighteous person. So persevering in prayer is a good thing. But he's saying, if you really want to be effective in prayer, this is the way to do it. So I think this makes sense. Uh, it's consistent with what, what David said in Psalm 34. Uh, and, and being righteous is not just avoiding doing bad things okay and think about what when peter's quoting from psalm 34 here he says you need to keep your lips from deceitful speech you need to avoid evil and you need to do good okay so righteousness is now a lot of people think righteousness you just cut out all these sins in your life well righteousness involves what, what, turning away from sin but also involves doing good which is what the angel was saying here. He's talking about, you know, uh, living righteously and also giving alms, helping, helping, looking out for the poor. Um, I think about what it says in James 127 also. This is, this is the idea of, 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 of a complete view of righteousness. His pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the world. So this is the, this is the, it's, it's keeping yourself separate from the world is regarding sin, but it's also loving and taking care of, of other people uh, of doing that. Also, I I'm reminded of Isaiah 58. This, this passage in Tobit reminds me of something in Isaiah 58 about the kind of fasting that God is looking for. It's all, all in the area of effective prayer, which Peter talks about. So think about this, Isaiah 58. <clears throat> 
Cry aloud with strength and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their sins and the house of Jacob their lawlessness. They seek me day by day and desire to know my ways. As the people who did righteousness and did not forsake the judgment of their God, they now ask me about righteous judgment and desire to draw near to God, saying, Why have we fasted, but you did not see it? Why have we humbled our souls, but you did not know it? Because in the days of your fast, you seek your own wills and mistreat those under your authority. If you fast for condemnations and quarrels and strike a humble man with your fists, why do you fast to me as you do today, so your voice may be heard in crying? I did not choose this fast and such a day for a man to humble his soul, nor if you should bow your neck like a ring and spread sackcloth and ashes under yourself, could you thus call such a fast acceptable? I did not choose such a fast, says the Lord. Rather, loose every bond of wrongdoing. Untie the knots of violent dealings. Cancel the debts of the oppressed. And tear apart every unjust contract. Break your bread for the hungry. Bring the homeless poor into your house. If you see a naked man, clothe him. Nor shall you disregard your offspring in your own household. Then your light shall break forth as the morning, and your healing shall spring forth quickly. Your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall cover you. Then you shall cry out, and God will hear you. While you were still speaking, he will say, behold, I'm here. If you take away your fetter, and the pointing of the finger and the word of grumbling. And if you give bread to the hungry from your soul and satisfy the humble soul, then your light shall rise up in the darkness and your darkness shall be as midday. So you want to have effective prayer? God says, God says, I'll answer you before you're even done talking. You, if this is the way you're approaching me, he says, I won't even wait for you to be finished. Those are the people I listen to. The reason I'm not listening to you is because you're not you're not righteous. This also reminds me of what Jesus says in Matthew 25 and in, in, in the sheep, that those are the ones, the sheep versus the goats. He's talking to two different groups of people that, that are calling him Lord. And this connection between prayer, righteousness, fasting, and almsgiving. I think about the Sermon on the Mount. First Sermon on the Mount, chapter five, talks off about dealing with righteousness. Jesus calling us to a higher standard of righteousness. And then chapter six, he talks about three things. Okay, he talks about when you pray, when you fast, when you give alms to the poor. And he says in all three, he says, do it in secret. And my father who sees in secret will reward you openly. I think this is all, it's all tied in just like in Isaiah 58. It's all tied in with the kind of effective prayer. That, that we need to have. Uh, you know, the whole picture about giving alms, this may be seem strange to us. It sounds like, you know, working out your salvation. Think about, think about all this in connection with the, the uh, conversion of Cornelius. Uh, in Acts chapter 10, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion in what was called the Italian regiment, a devoted man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up as a memorial before God. And, and, and further on in verse 31, the uh, Cornelius is recounting that encounter, and he says, the angel said to him, your prayer has been heard, and your alms are remembered in the sight of God. So this, this is the picture here of, of the prayer of a righteous, God-fearing man that ascends to the throne of God that God hears. Of course, James 5 tells us the prayer of a righteous man. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. This is what, this is what we see throughout the scriptures here. Uh, God hears the prayer of the righteous. And I'll close, close with the, uh, uh, 
couple of, uh, with, with, uh, oh, this is from a work by Tertullian called On Prayer, early Christian writer. There's some, two, two good one-liners in there. He says, we may not be as far from the ears of God as we are from his precepts. The memory of his precepts paves for our prayers a way unto heaven. So this is the picture. So your obedience, your righteousness paves the way for your prayers to go straight up to heaven. He says, that's how close your prayers are to the ear of God. And then uh, in, in this, a little further down, the same work. Uh, this is Annas Nessing Fathers, Volume 3, page uh, 685. He says, how rash it is either to pass a day without prayer while you refuse to make satisfaction to your brother or else by perseverance to anger to lose your prayer. So he's talking about, he's talking about you, know, you need to be reconciled with your brother before you pray to God. He says, how foolish it is to spend a whole day without prayer or to, to be in a state, an unrighteous state, and to be wasting time praying. He said both of those things are equally foolish. 